I'm Walt from 101 WKQX. Thanks for coming out to the Sound Lounge this afternoon. Just a, li a little thing before before we get going. Be sure you turn off your flashes and your ringers are off because that would be annoying for something like this if they went off in the middle. So just make sure. If you want to take pictures, videos, you can, but we have great cameras that will capture it all. Why don't you just live in the moment and just enjoy this because this is special, okay? You guys ready? Yeah. Cool. All righty. What you want to do, man? Your decision? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Guys, please, uh, I just want to, guys, please give it up. Allison Chains. Filming. Yeah, right. Let's let's try that again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Funny story. We did uh, uh, we did the unplugged in New York, and Lane kept fucking up Sledge Factory. We did it like eight <laughs> times. He blew the same thing in the second verse. Oh my god. All right, let's try that one more time. Here we go. We're gonna play uh, your decision for you guys. Stirs you on back inside. 
At least I remembered it, right? <laughs> I still can't believe we've got Alice in Chains yeah. and the Sound Loud sponsored by Coors Light. Yeah. yeah. Is that awesome? So, question. When you, when you put the band back together when you had this new uh, installation with William uh, in the mid-2000s, where did that song fall into the process of writing that record? Black Runs Into Blue. Oh, geez. I, that's, that's a few years ago. Later. I mean, yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, later in the process. I mean, Will and I have known each other since the turn of the century. Very turn of the century. <laughs> Go a little Bee Gees on you. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Uh, I was dating. Uh, I was dating a girl who was friend of friend of friend of friend well, of ours. Friend of mine. Friend of my band. Was your drummer's like ex girlfriend. Yeah, That's yeah, 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 yeah. My band moved to L.A. in 2000. Yeah. My band yeah. comes with the fall. We right. moved in February 2000. Actually arrived on Valentine's yeah. Day. And uh, and he had gotten turned on to our first album by by this girl, uh, Caressa Ayers, and a uh, good friend of ours who had moved out a few months prior to us. And so that was that was what sparked it, you know. Uh, he got turned on to that that first comes with the fall album. I was like, oh, I'd like to meet that guy. And then we met at the Dragonfly in L.A. and and the rest is history. Did you know right away that like maybe you would work with this guy in the future? Yeah, well, we did start working together. Right, we, I, took, much, I took right their band out on tour uh, yeah. to, to open up for uh, for me um, when I did the Degradation Trip album, and uh, I actually had already jammed with these guys and done a couple of gigs sitting in for Adam a couple <laughs> times when he was unavailable. Yeah, I mean, he he would know when we were playing in L.A. even when we we wouldn't know, like at the set time. Like it was, you know, we they, in L.A. a lot of times, like, well, we don't know. It might be ten thirty. It might be twelve thirty. We don't know. And then, like, but right, like. Two minutes before we were on stage, like we'd see him out there, like pacing around. He'd come on stage and jam some of our songs mm -hmm. with us, and even like he said, he sat in with our ba for our bass player when our bass player got locked up. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't make the gig at the yeah. Cat Club in, in Hollywood, and he he played bass for us. But that was a cool tour, uh, you know, for for all of us. And and not only did they do a set of their own, they basically were my band too. So uh, so they did two sets of well, <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> We did, we did double duty. That, that was man stuff. It was pretty sure. macho. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so then was Will an instant choice when you thought, well, we need somebody to? Step yeah, in? I mean, he was the only. Uh, he was an obvious choice for me. Uh, the guys didn't know him as well, and when we, uh, Sean and Mike and I started kicking around the idea of, uh, of uh, getting together and just playing some tunes, you know, with no real other plan than that. Hey, let's just get together and jam a little bit, you know. And I'm like. I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. I know, I know a guy. I, I read that Sean said instantly after the first, you know, get well, to I, I think we did Love, Hate, Love first, and that kind of sealed the deal. Yeah. 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 Um, it was, yeah. Does it still blow your mind when you turn around and go like, oh, yeah. my God, I am playing well, we these weren't, guys? We weren't in. Oh, um, go ahead. Does it still, like, blow your mind when you're playing and you realize <laughs> you're doing this? He's bored with us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the whole way that it, with that it happened, the whole trajectory that led up to it and everything, it kind of, uh, 
you know, precludes a lot of that kind of stuff. But it was I mean, all really natural too. Yeah, you know, that's the happened. thing. It yeah. happened. It happened over such a number of years, and then and and, yeah. and uh, you know, and, and we kind of made our way uh, by being on stage. And so there were so many things that were uh, that that sort of were forefront beyond any of this other stuff. Like, oh my God, I'm playing. you know, like right. there was like, man, we got how many people out there in the crowd right now? We got like. And there was always like all this pressure on us, and there was all this scrutiny on us. And and the first gigs we did, and well, the first one was on television. So I mean, there uh, were yeah. it's like there were so many more things to worry about and deal with, you know, in the immediate. You know, and it kind of washed all the other stuff away, you know. But the you know the way we've always gone gone about things, uh, you know, um, before Will got here and and since he's been here is is has been really organic. We've just kind of followed our own thing and and done things that felt right for our own reasons, and we've been really lucky to have a really long career doing that. We weren't, we weren't into there there is no replacing Lane, so we weren't in asking Will to come in and try to be Lane. We wanted him to be himself, and and Will and I had already spent time together. Yeah. And we played the stuff, and as Alice in Chains has always been a, a two-pilot aircraft to fly globally. Sure. So you know that's just the way it had to work, and and uh, uh, we always had a had a real chemistry that way. And yeah. the, the every record that we've done, we've tried to be really interchangeable, you know, and because it like it, it takes two. Well, guys it, to fly it's, the plane, it definitely so. still works, and yeah. that's why I'm so yeah. excited to hear. It takes two, yeah. baby. It does. It does. I'm so excited to hear what's coming next because you guys have been working on a new record. It's a good one. Is it done? It's done. It is done. It's pretty good. You guys heard the first. You guys heard the first song, what, a couple weeks ago. So, uh, so you worked with Nick Rescue again on this record. Yep. And you recorded it in a bunch of different studios. Why? Why so many different studios? Well, we wanted to go to. Uh, we were talking about recording in Seattle. Um, and going back to the record, the the studio that uh, we recorded the Alice in Chains record in, Bad uh, Animals, which used to be Bad Animals, yeah. now it's Studio X, and I think it was something before that as well. So mm -hmm. um, it's like the main studio in Seattle, and and we've all kind of all of the bands kind of recorded there at one time or another. So it was cool to go back, and we spent the whole summer there uh, doing basic tracks. And Great time of year to be there. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> beautiful time of year to do it. Yeah. If you're gonna do Seattle, do it in the summer. And then Nick. Uh, Nick has a studio out in Nashville, just out, you know, like maybe about 45 minutes out of the side of Nashville. So we still had a lot of vocals and a lot of guitars and stuff to do. So uh, Sean came out for a little bit, but it was basically me and Will. We yeah. just went out, to, <laughs> went out to Nashville. Hung in the country. Yeah. And then I got sick in the middle of that. I went to Mexico to right. party with, That's right. with hey Sammy, Sammy for yeah. his birthday, and I got <laughs> ill. And Oops. that kind of knocked me off for a couple of weeks, so I lost some time there too. So. I actually did a lot of recording on my own that I wasn't able to do in Nashville right. because I was ill. So I, I did a bunch of vocals and guitar stuff at, at my house, and then we capped it off at Hanson, which has been our kind of go-to. Yeah, yeah. For Hanson in LA. Yeah. yeah, and then the, this first song that just came out about a week ago. Mm -hmm. uh, where did that come from? Because you talk about being an imposter, not the one you know. What, what's the inspiration behind this song? Um. I don't know. I mean, it's it, it's always really difficult for me to to lay out what it is because I'd rather you tell me or n not even tell me. You just it, it be whatever it is to you, you know. And and I also like to. I'm a little selfish too. I like to keep. <laughs> I like to keep what it is for me as well. The the cool part of songwriting, I think, is in the in the challenge of it is is taking something personal, whatever you know that you. That is internal, making and, it universal. and making it universally okay. translatable to everybody. You know, and you know, we're all human beings, so we're all you know we're not that far apart, and we're all pretty much the same basically. So, uh, if you feel something, and you put it out in a way that's not completely so spelled out, I think it's easier for people to make it their own. You know, so well, I have a new favorite chord, and it's the beautifully ugly chord that begins this song. That is awesome. How about another song? All right, shut that one. You want to do it? Yes. All right, might as well try it. It's not, not your, not your typical, it's not your typical, typical folk song, song cool by we'll affair, right. but <laughs> we'll try it. Give it a shot. All right. Let's 
start that again. A little What's cracky there. Yeah, cracky. sorry. One, two, three, four. Tough one to sing in the morning. Those, those harmonies are magical. Love those harmonies. Oh, oh thank you. It's Thanks, it's man. Such important thing. Um, That's our deal, dude. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's such a signature part to the uh, Alice in Chains sound. Uh, in the '90s, was the Seattle music scene really as close knit as it appears to be? Because it seems like, as we look back, and all these artists knew everybody else. Sure. Everybody. I mean, I think you would find that in any town that's got a lot of creative people. I think Seattle seemed yeah. a little bit closer than most. Yeah, I mean, 
the, we, you know, we were like a, we we're an outpost, you know, we're up in the very corner up there, you know what I mean? So we're not necessarily known for like the, you know, uh, center of the universe as far as it comes to the music business or entertainment. So although we've had some great artists come out of the Northwest, but I think that probably, that probably helped us kind of develop, you know, and kind of do our own thing un kind of touched by anything else and before anybody even paid any attention to it it was already kicking ass you know so, sure and it was cool to be a part of because it was all your friends and and uh you know everybody was basically the same age within a couple of years and there's all everybody was had their own band and it was it was great man. it was a magical was time really, really cool. and then there seemed to be a lot of people that tried to jump on that bandwagon was that annoying i mean i, th I think you I think that, that that happens a bit with with anything that kind of comes out and is new, you know. I mean, um, I mean, it's always you know the it if it makes an impact and and somebody wants to emulate it, that's cool. I mean, that that's how I started. Right. So little by emulating stuff I liked until I found my own voice, and so I don't think there's anything wrong with it, you know. Which is uh, I, this is such a stock question, but I was talking to Mike McCready once, and he was professing his love for Ace Frehley as oh, yeah. one of his greatest influences. Yeah, well, we all love we're, Ace. So I'm, of, I'm really curious. Right here. I'm really curious as to what you were influenced by growing up, because I hear a lot of blues in what you do. Just curious as to what were the influences to Jerry Cantrell. Oh, you know, I mean, both my f both my parents were country music fans, so I grew up on classic country. And my grandmother, I was listen watched the Lawrence Welk show every week, and so that was always on the TV. But it, there, there was always music in the in the house. Uh, everybody played an instrument. My mother and my aunt, they both played organ, and and uh, so they'd always be playing tunes and stuff. You just walk, in, you know, walk in, and my mom would be rocking out playing tunes you know, by herself, she'd do that all the time, or with my aunt, or I'd sing with her, and uh, uh, watching Hee Haw with my dad, <laughs> you know, and, and Lawrence Welk with my grandma, and like, you know, anytime the Grammys or any sort of music show was on, that was always on right. the TV, and it was a big deal, you know, music was important in our household, and and uh, I think my mom always kind of wanted to, had that dream to be a professional musician too, and uh, you know. I finally got to, I, I got to realize that so but you know that's all part of that but you know all of the all of the stuff like you know uh, AM radio at the time I mean listening to you know Jim Croce and Gordon Lightfoot and the Beatles and you know all of that stuff and uh, you know uh, and then I discovered rock uh, the Elton John I think was the first kind of rock and roll thing that I gravitated to and my buddies were all into to Elton too and and uh, and then I made the big jump with Kiss and ACDC when I'm like guitar oriented stuff, you know. So, and that's that's really where it's okay, that's I'm gonna do that, right? I want to do that, I want to be, I want to play guitar, and uh, you know, all the all the classic English metal, you know, Sabbath, uh, Zeppelin, the natural progression, yeah, Scorps, all that stuff, Pink Floyd, uh, you know, we had Aerosmith, Ted Nugent, you know, you, you name it, right? Uh, yeah, um. I know you just played with Ann Wilson at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, doing Chris Cornell, yeah, uh, Soundgarden songs. Yeah, um, well, that's for all the, all of the artists that passed that year. But, yeah, but specifically um, Chris. Yeah. Um, it was uh, such a. It's been a tough couple of years here. I mean, we lost Chester yeah. Bennington. We just lost Scott Hutchinson from uh, Frank and Rabbit last week, uh, and of course Chris Cornell. What's what's the memory that you replay to remember Chris? Uh, I just uh, he was just. Uh, he was a really amazing human being, you know, and, and we, you know, like, Seattle's not that big of a town like you said before, so we, we, you know, it was just sort of, I remember, you know, just hanging out, going out and going out in the woods with like a, like a half rack of beer and a couple of dogs and about three or four of us cruising through the woods and going down to the beach and just being kind of buffoons, going to each other's shows. Uh, he was always consistent to me, you know, like there was always a handful of people in your life that no matter how many years pass or whatever, when you see them, it's the same look in their eyes and you have that same connection and it never changed with him. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll miss that, but I also treasure a lot of times that I had had with him and also uh, the his legacy as an artist, you know? It's, a, it's an amazing body of work and Soundgarden has always been one of my favorite bands and I think uh, a very... Uh, 
like a flagpole band for the rest of us in the Northwest because they were they they were around before anybody, you know. Right. Except for maybe you know the Stone and Jeff and the Green River days and stuff, you know. But but I think they were pretty much the the band we all looked up to, you know. Um, I I need to comment on your acting skills because uh, when when Alice in Chains did the Nona tapes. I thought that was one of, oh, most, yeah. one of the most... Nona Weissbaum? Yeah, yeah. One of the most amazing things I've ever seen for a promotional video. Did you see the last one? And from then the last I'm going to say... And then yeah, you AIC yeah, 23. Yeah. Nesta Cleveland over here. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> so, so a band that has such a, such a heavy and dark side to it, how do you find you know, the inspiration to do something that's lighthearted like that? Because of that. Because of that? <laughs> yeah. You have to. Yeah. You have to. You're just, you know, just people, you know? So there's every dimension... <laughs> And you know, it, it, whatever's heavy in your life has to be counterbalanced with something. You know, so that's it's always good to laugh, to man. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Any chance you could twist your arm for another song, or I wouldn't mind doing another one just in case that yeah. first one isn't that great. You know, <laughs> it, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it is early in the morning. This is like Burr wake up time for us. So, <laughs> and that song for for in particular, it's even hard for me to do it sound checks until my voice is warmed up. But, Let's uh, want to do that, just so we got one in the bag. Yeah. You, you mind? All right, cool. Allison Chase.
a slave Hey, big thanks to Wintrust for letting Robert and friends hang out on the best seat in the house. Anybody can get that. All you got to do is keep listening for the keyword on 101 WKQX, and you could be sitting up there for the next Sound Lounge. Uh, any uh, date for the new album? Uh, Paper Loop. And uh, some, it'll be sometime uh, end of summer, in beginning of fall ish, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Sean likes to say the future. Uh, no. A title? It's, it, it, won't be, it won't be long. Yeah. A title? It won't be long. <laughs> it's called It Won't Be Long in the Future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us this afternoon. I like that. We might use that. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, can't wait to see you tonight at the Riv. Please give it up. Allison Chain. Thank you.